Good morning. Welcome to West Baldwin United Methodist Church, our worship online at 1015. I'm Pastor Bo Jackson Landsberg. This is my husband, Tony Landsberg, our music director. Our daughter, Hope, and the cats will probably make an appearance at some point. And let us, uh, let us begin by uh, noting that after this worship service at 11, or as close after as we can manage it, we have our Zoom fellowship time. And uh, then tomorrow evening at 6, we have a brief Zoom meeting of the relaunch team to discuss how things are going with our in-person worship service at 9 a.m. in our physical building on Pequocket Trail or Routes 5 and 113 in West Baldwin. We have some birthdays to be able to sing for. We have Ryan Stacy, James Ritter, Joy Chassie, and Sierra Farrington. series on the four potent prayers to invigorate outreach and evangelism. Um, the, the, the last two weeks I, I covered the first prayer, uh, pray for help. Last week I talked about pray for boldness. Uh, today I'm going to talk about praying for opportunity. So believers may imagine that they've never had a chance to witness uh, you know, busy schedules, um, you know, just the everyday, our everyday lives get in the way. Um, lack of uh, being neighborly may make the, you know, the God moments um, be very few and far between, if, if at all at times. It's, it's difficult. So we, we need to look for the opportunities to pray for those those moments, those uh, those those almost miracle, we'll call them miracles that that we encounter each day. Um, so continue to pray for those, and you know you you'll be uh, very surprised to see how how this works if if you pray for this regularly, and you'll you'll see the exciting ways that God brings uh, you know other people. Um, and their 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 lives and life stories and their experiences and in, into your your uh, life and in your your circle our our church family, and that that's how praying for opportunity works. So, uh, Bud uh, Brown, who who put this together, uh, says you know continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open a door for us for, for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I make it clear which is how I ought to speak. And that's taken from Colossians uh, chapter 4, verses 2, two through 4. So uh, the prayers so far are pray for help because we know no, how, no matter how many hands and feet that we have uh, to do the work of God, to do the outreach ministries, to do the evangelism, we can always use uh, more help. Uh, pray for boldness. Um, the world isn't always ready to hear the message, or they don't realize that they should stop, pause, listen to the message, and, and open their hearts to the message. And today's uh, prayer, pray for the opportunity Look for those opportunities where, um, you know, we, we, we see God working and we can use those opportunities and, and, and witness those and, and share that with others. Thank you. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our prayer. Down by the riverside, down 
by the riverside Down by the riverside Gonna lay down my burden Down by the riverside Study war no more I ain't gonna study war no more Study war no more Study war no more no more I ain't gonna study war no more Study war no more Study war no more Gonna lay down my sword and shield Down by the riverside Down by the riverside Down by the riverside Gonna lay down my sword and shield Down by the riverside Study war no more I ain't gonna study war no more Study war no more Study war no more no more I ain't gonna study war no more Study war no more Study war no more Gonna put on my starry crown Down by the riverside Down by the riverside Down by the riverside Gonna put on my starry crown down by the riverside, study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Study war no more. Study war no more, no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Study war no more. Study war no more. Gonna talk with the Prince of Peace. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside, gonna talk with the Prince of Peace. Down by the riverside, study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Study war no more. Study war no more, no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Study war no more Study war no more Gonna shake hands around the world Down by the riverside Down by the riverside Down by the riverside Gonna shake hands around the world Down by the riverside Study war no more I ain't gonna study war no more Study war no more Study war no more no more I ain't gonna study war no more Study war no more Study war no more You may find on our Facebook uh page or have been emailed through our newsletter chain, the uh, bulletin, please join me in our call to worship. The Lord says, if you choose me as your companion, I will not be alone. Your love will always be with me. You will never fear. You will live in me. I will see by the light of your wisdom. You will live in light, hope, patience. I will not be alone. Your love will always be with me. I loved you before you were born. Trust in me. You will live in me. I will see by the light of your wisdom. You have loved me even before I existed. And knowing this, I can place my trust in your love and set aside every fear. Amen. Our first hymn is found in Our Faith We Sing, or online, Come, Come, Everybody Worship.
worship, worship God always. Worship and remember how Jesus long ago taught us how to talk to God. Something we should know. Come, come, and I worship with a prayer or song of praise. Come, come, and I worship, worship. Please join me in the opening prayer. God of gardens and goodness and grace, till the soil of our hearts, make it ready to receive all that you would plant. Root out selfishness and pride, prune back greed and indifference. Plant us in fresh healing soil, away from well-worn paths of old grudges. Scatter seeds of unity and gratitude, justice and joy. Cultivate courage and compassion. Graft into us your mission of restoration and forgiveness. Produce within us an abundant harvest. We rejoice in your labor of love. Amen. Our scripture readings this morning um, come from Mark 8 and 1 Corinthians 2. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. And the Matthew 9, 11 to 13. And yet, is that on the list? Yeah. Huh. So I don't have those printed out, so, <laughs> so we, will, um, we will let you read those on your own, and we will do our song response. God will take care of you. Today's message is not a transaction, but a transformation. One of the early church fathers, Athanasius of Alexandria, 4th century Egypt, said this, Here then is the reason why the word dwelt among us, namely that having proved his Godhead by his works, he might surrender his own temple to death in the same act also. He showed himself mightier than death, displaying his own body, incorruptible, as the first fruit of the resurrection. Another church father, Gregory of Nyssa, um, 4th century Cappadocia, or Turkey, said, It was necessary that man should be sanctified by the humanity of God. It was necessary that he himself should free us, triumphing over the tyrant by his own strength, and that he should recall us to himself by his Son, who is the mediator, who does all for the honor of the Father, to whom he is obedient in all things. Let the rest of the mystery, 
be venerated silently. Our understanding of why Jesus died on the cross and the meaning and purpose of his death is the found on, foundation on which our whole body of Christ, the church, stands. But this is one of those big spiritual questions that we spend a lifetime wrestling with. It's not a question with a simple, straightforward answer. As soon as we answer too concretely, then we tend to bind God up in our own human ways of thinking. If we imprison God in our human explanations of God, we pull God down to our level. Our God is bigger and better than we can imagine. Of all the jobs that religion has to do in this world, the most important is to connect us to the experience of God's real and living presence. Retribution versus restoration. First reading is uh, uh, a short passage from Romans 12. Dear friends, don't try to get even. Let God take revenge or deliver justice. In the scriptures, the Lord says, I am the one to take revenge and pay them back. The scriptures also say, if your enemies are hungry, give them something to eat. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. That will be the same as piling burning coals on their heads. Don't let evil defeat you, but defeat evil with good. And from Acts 3, But God had his prophets tell that his Messiah would suffer, and now he has kept that promise. So turn to God. Give up your sins and you will be forgiven. Then that time will come when the Lord will give you fresh strength. He will send you Jesus, his chosen Messiah. But Jesus must stay in heaven until God makes all things new, just as his holy prophets promised long ago. One way to understand Jesus' death is called penal or substitutionary atonement. This explanation says that Jesus the Christ chose to sacrifice his divine human life in order to be punished in place of us sinners, satisfying the need of a holy God for punishment of sin. This makes the cross a transaction, in a sense. God has paid the fine for our turning away from God. This explanation relies on the belief that God's justice requires retribution or punishment. This explanation is probably the most familiar one to you, but there are two things to know about it. First, it's the newest theory of the cross. It was worked out from concepts of the Protestant Reformation, which happened starting in 1517, developed by Martin Luther and then John Calvin. It became more of what we understand today through the work of theologian Charles Hodge, who lived 1797 to 1878. That's just over 140 years ago. So for well over 1,600 years, the church did not have this kind of understanding of the cross. Second, it's only a theory. It's only an explanation we've tried to come up with to understand the cross. Prior to the Protestant churches, again, the 1600s, the Reformation, the body of Christ, the whole church, was divided roughly into East and West. The Eastern Orthodox churches, like Greek, Turkey, and the Roman Catholic Church of the West, Rome. They still divide over the emphasis placed on the mystery of Jesus the Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. The Catholic or Western, and therefore also more our leaning, is that Christ suffered and died. The Eastern and Orthodox understanding of the mystery is that Christ destroyed death and rose in resurrection. All of that's part of the same mystery. A more holistic and integrated understanding of the role of Jesus the Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection keeps both important concepts. Jesus in his humanity suffered and died, 
the Trinity of God overturned death and Jesus the Christ rose in resurrection. The why? The work of God throughout creation's history has been to restore creation and reconnect to the disconnected parts of it by a transforming relationship with God. All of creation, including humanity, is restored, redeemed made valuable and productive again through the reconciling relationship to God that is sozo, healing, wholeness, and salvation. This is the good news of restoration. This is what we can joyfully proclaim to the world about Jesus' death and resurrection. Here are the readings that I lost before. The Mind of Christ. Mark 8, Jesus began telling his disciples what would happen to him. He said, the nation's leaders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law of Moses will make the Son of Man suffer terribly. He will be rejected and killed, but three days later he will rise to life. Then Jesus explained clearly what he meant. Peter took Jesus aside and told him to stop talking like that. But when Jesus turned and saw the disciples, he corrected Peter. He said to him, Satan, get away from me. You are thinking like everyone else and not like God. 1 Corinthians 2.12 But God has given us his spirit. That's why we don't think the way that the people of this world think. That's also why we can recognize the blessings that God has given us. Accepting an explanation of Jesus' death and resurrection is one thing. You can say, oh yeah, I believe it. Making it real is something else entirely. We need to graft the understanding into our everyday life, every decision we make. Grafting is when you take two plants and bind them together in such a way that they continue growing and maturing as a new life a combination of the two. God's answer to our spiritual condition is to restore us, to give us value and purpose. Everyone, everything, every incident that happens, every person we meet is valuable and has a purpose, either to bless us or for us to bless. Restoration is done through the relationship with God. In this relationship, we are transformed like the plants grafted together. This can be difficult for us. We can resist understanding it, resist even being willing to let God do this. The disciples struggled. They understood the Messiah to be a glorious military political leader for Israel who would free them from Roman oppression and establish them as a world power again. A crucified Messiah was simply too hard for them, too painful, too defeated, too embarrassing. They didn't want to understand this kind of Messiah. Peter had just been the star student, the first of the disciples to say who Jesus was. Jesus is the Messiah. Then Peter refused to accept Jesus' words about what kind of Messiah he would be his impending suffering and death. Jesus didn't want him to talk about any of that stuff in front of the other disciples. And Peter received one of the most stinging rebukes in the Gospels. Jesus turns to him and says, Get away from me, Satan. When Peter refused to accept the Messiah that Jesus came to be, he was rejecting God. So too with us. Matthew 9, 11 through 13. Some Pharisees asked Jesus' disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard them and answered, healthy people don't need a doctor, but sick people do. Go and learn what the scriptures mean when they say, instead of offering sacrifices to me, I want you to be merciful to others. I didn't come to invite good people to be my followers. I came to invite sinners. Instead of spilling blood, 
to get us reconciled to a distant and demanding God. God spilled God's own blood to reach out to us, to show us he loves us. The cross rejects being a transaction and becomes a generous outpouring of God's love, meant to bring us through a transformation in order to trust and love our Creator. God's love for us is unconditional. In order to join in loving God and one another and all creation, we must accept the transformation God makes in us when we come into a relationship with God. Jesus did not come to change God's mind about us. Jesus came to change our minds about God. Will you let him? Amen. We continue our worship by looking at our joys and concerns and lifting up our prayers. We had several um, additions to the prayer list that uh, you would have received with your newsletter email, uh, the same newsletter trail we use for the newsletter. Um, and we lifted up Dot Heart for um, waiting on testing for why she's coughing constantly. And so we just ask for God's prayers and for comfort in this time and for wisdom and discernment with medical professionals. She also updated us that her sister Annette is continuing to um, cut back on medications and is doing well and not expecting any treatments right now. She also had a joy. She and Wes um, are expecting their fourth great grandson due in November. So a great Thanksgiving blessing there. So we do ask for God's healing presence and comfort for Dot and for Annette, and we lift up the joy of a great grandson. Susan had, um, B has put off, um, has told us that the knee braces have been put off production or, or being able to receive them until the end of the month. And, uh, and that also she's been diagnosed with severe sleep apnea. So we just offer up prayers for Susan, for comfort, and for rest, and for um, the easing of her pains and suffering. Nancy lifted up um, the weather situation that happened over Brian, uh, Barker Pond in the Hiram area uh, yesterday that uh, there was a water spout or mini tornado and uh, that, that the nobles out there on the pond are doing fine, that there was some tree down and damage but not anything to, to their camp and we just pray for all those around the pond that uh, the damage is minimal and that the, uh, the joy can continue of resting and relaxing in the summer months. Tony raised um, prayers for the family of Jeff Mazur. He's someone we knew through the Goodwins Mills United Methodist Church connection. And he passed this week um, as the result of, um, he'd had a major heart bypass surgery such that they needed to put him in an induced coma in order to rest his heart. And when they tried to bring him back out of that, his heart was not strong enough. Um, so we are with all of the family and all the, the friends and connection and community around Jeff in this time of mourning, and we ask for God's healing presence. Tony also raised that Paul um, Hopkins, uh, one of our music team fellows, um, had uh, communicated that they were able to see his father, Reverend Hopkins, for the first time um, since the COVID-19 shutdown, since he is in Gorham House. They were outside and had plexiglass and masks and it was different, but they were able to sing together, to sing a, a, a hymn together, and that is a joy. Um, also was raised today the joy of having music, even if we cannot sing, in our in-person 9 a.m. service. And Leah had brought up the, the praise of the in-person worship and the connection. Um, 
the isolation and the pain and suffering of that isolation for those that do not have the internet or um, some of the other ways in which people stay connected or stay connected to the outside world, even through television events. And just raised that uh, we should continue to check on our neighbors, get to know them and make sure that they have what they need and that they are okay. And so, are there any others that have come up? Yes, actually. So uh, Marilyn Hopkins and, and, and Paul, you know, normally this time of the year, they are set up over at the, uh, the fairgrounds and uh, uh, Oskey Valley Fairgrounds. And since that is not happening, Marilyn just uh, shared that you know this is it, it's a difference to be uh, able to join us for worship. So I I think that's a joy. I, I would hope it is. And we absolutely uh, enjoy having them with us. Yes, we do. And. Uh, Denise Martis has uh, shared that Jenny is home, so that's a joy, uh, but also a concern uh, for John, who's having breathing problems. Yeah. Okay. Same thing as a concern. So we can lift up uh, Marilyn and the joy of being together in worship, even though it means a change of not being a part of the the fair, as many fairs are canceled this year. And so it is a different, it's a difference that we can celebrate um, and we ask for God's blessing on those beautiful differences. Um, Denise has raised that Jenny is home, so on your prayer list where it said she was coming home, she is home, so that is a great report and we can lift up that joy and answer to prayer that she is doing better and just pray for um, continued uh, growth and peace and comfort and um, stability in, in home. She also raises um, the concern for her husband, John, that he's been having breathing problems. And so we just ask for God's healing presence to fill and surround them in, in their home. And so we can now lift up our prayers. Lord, we know that you hold us in the palm of your hand, that you have good things, restoration, forgiveness, and blessings to pour out on us. We have before you our concerns, but there are concerns on our hearts you have not heard aloud. We lift them up to you now. And we say together, Lord, hear our prayers. And we remember the many joys that we have mentioned and that there are many other joys on our heart that God knows but we have not raised specifically and we lift them up to you now. And we say together, Lord, hear our praise. And we continue with the prayers that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We turn now to our time of presentation of tithes and offerings. We presented um, those physically at our 9 a.m. in-person worship. But we also take this opportunity to say you can mail in your tithe or offering and gift to the church at the mailing address on the bulletin. Um, and also that we can take a moment as the offertory is played to reflect upon the ways in which we are giving to others and one another and the ways in which we have been receiving the gifts of others. And we will follow that by our um, doxology and prayer of dedication. Look 
looking down from heaven above It's like a story of love Can you hear me? Came back only yesterday I'm moving further away Want you near me? All I needed was the love you gave All I needed was the sun who saves all I ever knew, only you. Sometimes when I think of your name, spirit within is all aflame. And I need you, I listen to the words that you say, Lord I want to obey. was the love you gave all I needed was the son who saves and all I ever knew only you this is gonna take a long time to be fruit and not vine what can you do with me I wonder if you'll understand and just take hold of my hand What's the future to be? All I needed was the love you gave All I needed was the sun who saves And all I ever knew Only you And all I ever knew Suffering servant and bread of life, we accept your body. It is the life-giving stuff of all creation. We accept your blood. It is the essence of all humanity that suffers unjustly. In your body is the substance of what we fear and refuse. In your blood is our healing, wholeness, and salvation. We humbly give back to you from all the blessings you have poured out on us. May our offerings and sacrifices glorify and please you. Amen. Our hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness, number 140 in our United Methodist hymnals.
God, you have called us, your servants, to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. setting sun 